كَلَّا بَلْ تُحِبُّونَ الْعَاجِلَةَ وَتَذَرُونَ الْآخِرَةَ He loves the عَاجِلَةَ meaning the hasty one, the immediate one. He wants the now. For many people, rather the majority of us, if you were to say to this person, I want you to do such and such, and if you do it, I'm going to give you such and such now. The majority of people will respond. Why? Because immediate gratification. The secret word here is immediate, now. We want things now. And this is why sin is so appealing, brothers and sisters, because the gratification, the, the reward or the, the buzz comes now. And similarly, this is why taqwa, having fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so heavy on the soul because the reward of it, you don't see it fully only in the hereafter. You don't see it now. It's difficult because we are hasty people. وَخُلِقَ الْإِنسَانُ مِنْ عَجَلٍ وَكَانَ الْإِنسَانُ عَجُولًا Allah says man was created out of haste. We are, we, are, we are people who rush. That is why perhaps the best selling protein shakes out there are the ones that say to you what? Get big in 10 days, right? And the best uh, weight loss milkshakes are similarly ones who say, you know, lose your fat in 10 days. And that is why steroids are so big in a lot of the gyms because of the aspect of immediate muscle growth. We want it now. Allah says, you love the present life. You love the now. And you leave the hereafter. There was a beautiful study that was conducted in the late 1960s at a center at Stanford University. And the chief researcher was a man called Walter Michel. And what he did was that he took a group of four-year-old children and he gave each and every one of them a marshmallow and he placed it on the table. And he said to the child, this is for you and you have two choices. You can either gobble it up now or if you wait patiently for a few more minutes, you will be given two marshmallows. So again, you have the immediate gratification over a delayed gratification, but with what? With a double reward. Huh? Dunya and Akhira. The analogy is so similar. Allahu Akbar. And then he began to analyze them, and the supervisor left the room, and there was a camera recording the behavior of these children. Subhanallah, it is amazing. And it is an accurate representation of what man is all about. Some of the children couldn't resist the temptation, and they just put it in their mouth and put aside this experiment. Too much. And there were other children who were a lot more patient. Yeah, some of them they started singing songs to themselves, trying to pretend the marshmallow is not there. Other children, they turned their back to the table, trying to ignore it. Yeah, other children were even seen licking circles around the marshmallow. Maybe you'd accidentally lick the marshmallow on the way, right? Subhanallah al -Azim. What is interesting about this study, because it's very long term, yeah, often cited and very interesting. After 14 years, the same researcher went to these children who took part in this experiment. And he began, to, he began to analyze their demeanor, their personalities, and what type of people they became to be. He found, subhanAllah, that the children who ate the marshmallow right at the start without delaying for two, they were people who were seen as very vulnerable. They were vulnerable and prone to all types of difficulties. Their parents and teachers described them as being very prone to jealousy. They were not very assertive in school. Their grades in their SATs uh, 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 exams were significantly less than everybody else's. They were quite unreliable. They didn't have much of a personality. They didn't have much optimism in life. Whilst the other children who were able to delay the first marshmallow to get another two, several minutes later, the teachers, they said, SubhanAllah, they are assertive and they are reliable and they can carry responsibilities and they have optimism and they have an objective in life and their grades are very much higher than everybody else's. Isn't this an accurate representation of what man is all about? In other words, ya ikhwan, in our context of today, skip a marshmallow today and you will feast. You will feast tomorrow. Now, when you look into these two groups of children, what is it that made one group better than the other? Is it genius? Super intelligence? They're all four-year-olds. What is it that made them different to the others? It is a combination of two precious abilities, ya ikhwan. If we were to apply these two abilities in our journey to our Creator, subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will pass almost every exam by the permission of Allah when you are given a choice between the halal, the pure halal, and the polluted haram. What are these two characteristics? Number one, visualization of the outcome. And a little ability to visualize the outcome, the two marshmallows in the end. How can we summarize this in one word? An ability to visualize the outcome in the end. What is it that they have up here? Knowledge. 
knowledge. And number two, an ability to delay an immediate pleasure for a more fuller one in the future. How can we summarize that in one word? Patience. Knowledge plus patience. Knowledge plus patience. Now, if we take this equation and we apply it in our study now, meaning when a person is presented with a haram, every single one of us, brothers and sisters, do not excuse yourself, is weak, beginning with myself, to a certain shade of haram. If it's not in nicotine, it's gonna be in music. If it's not in music, it's gonna be in men or women. If it's not in that, it's gonna be in appearances in public that are contrary to what the Prophet ﷺ has taught us to dress like. It's gonna be in one of them. If we want to pass that exam, Take these two elements and plug it into that situation and by the permission of Allah you will pass. I will pass. Knowledge. Knowledge of what? Knowledge of marshmallows? No. Knowledge of the akhirah. Knowledge of the unseen. Knowledge of what awaits you in the hereafter if you are patient. This will help. Like where Imam Muslim narrates on the authority of Anas that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment will take an individual who is heading or an individual who had lived the most lavish and luxuriant and spoiled life on earth. Every type of dress he had, every type of treasure he had, wealth, women, relationship, status, he had. He never experienced pain, he never experienced bad health, he never experienced bad press. This person is taken and he is dipped just once into the fire and then he is taken out the other side. And then Allah Almighty will ask him, Oh my slave, have you ever experienced any good in your life? He will say, by Allah, I have never seen any good in my life. One dip in the hellfire, when he saw the mountains of fire, and he saw the scorpions, and he saw the valleys of hell, and he saw the trenches, and he saw the chains, and he saw the beasts. Just one glance of Jahannam made him forget every type of lavishness that he experienced in this world. Likewise, a person who had lived the most miserable life here on earth. This person lived in exile. This person had bad health. This person may have been in solitary confinement. This person may have suffered from every type of difficulty. You can imagine poverty, loneliness, lack of friends, lack of family, lack of everything. And he is taken and he is dipped once just into Jannah. And then he is taken out the other side. Then Allah Almighty asks him, Oh my slave, هل رأيت, هل رأيت Have you ever seen any hardship in your life, by the way? And he will say, Wallahi, oh Allah, I have never seen any evil in my life. I have never seen any difficulty in my life. One dip in Jannah and one glance at its gardens and treasures made him forget every type of difficulty he experienced. So how, how expensive and precious is the world that we are living in? This is the type of knowledge that I'm referring to. This is the type of knowledge that you need in this first part of the equation. And we said patience, patience. That is what the first, se the second group of kids they had over the other. Patience. What do we mean in this context? Patience by knowing that paradise is simply a home for those who are patient here in this world. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ يَدْخُلُونَ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنْ كُلِّ بَابٍ سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ بِمَا صَبَرْتُمْ Angels will be coming into your palace as you reside in Jannah. And they will be coming in from all of the rooms of your palace. They want to greet you. They want to give you salam. They want to salute you for how patient you were, for how good you were in this world. And what will they say? Allah says, they will say to you, Salamun alaykum bima sabartum. Peace be upon you. Because of the patience that you had. The angels identified patience. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Insan, وَجَزَاهُمْ بِمَا صَبَرُوا جَنَّةً وَحَرِيرًا and Allah Almighty will give them gardens and silk because they were patient. Because they were patient. Yeah? Man, he loves the present life. And he leaves the hereafter. 